I was born in Moscow, Russia, and I lived there for 24 years. And then I came to the United States to actually study to graduate school. And since 1996, I've been living here. I did not study film in uh, Russia, I studied linguistics and languages. Mm -hmm. And so the whole, but kind of always wanted to uh, be a filmmaker. And so when I came here, that was basically my way out from the academia world of languages to kind of filmmaking world. And I came to dance film about 10 years ago. I was looking for performers who do not need verbal language to express ideas. Of course, natural choice is the dancers. And my school in here was, I, I've been exposed to a lot of experimental film. And of course, I knew about Maya Darren and Shirley Clark and Yvonne Rain even um, hmm. from a film world kind of perspective, experimental film tradition, uh, or like they call it, American avant-garde, or whatever words you want to use of the 60s. So um, I was interested how, is there anything, what is the history of dance film? Correct. And have you ever been to Africa before that, before you made Nora? Uh, no, I, this is a very interesting kind of journey, because um, in 2002, I think, um, somebody approached me to edit the film. Uh, uh, it was a lot of footage from a festival in Montreal where they sometimes present the companies from Africa. And that's the first time I actually learned that there was even like a movement of contemporary dance there. And I started to research a little bit and I was quite interested also trying to understand the politics of it all because I couldn't really understand how is it possible that these people also, you know, doing all this contemporary work, being completely ignorant in many ways, like how is it all working out really? And understanding this relationship between um, contemporary Africa and traditional Africa. And that film brought me to Joan Frosch. She did ask me whether we would, I'd be willing to make a film with her about um, this movement of uh, contemporary dance in Africa. And so that's how I started to uh, get involved deeper and deeper in this kind of in the scene. And then. Um, eventually, we made the film Movement Revolution Africa, and that's through that film I met Norge Palmieri, um, who at the time was working with Urban Bush Women, which is an American company based in New York. And it was a really personal connection, more than a kind of political connection of any kind. I mean, she kept saying to me, "Well, you're like we're both nomadic women. We travel everywhere. We, you know, we don't really kind of have home. We're so cosmopolitan, but at the same time." It very much, you know, where we're from very much composes and defines how we think and perceive the world. Mm. Nora had two quite, like, amazing uh, features. I mean, she, um, when she walked into the room, you know, everybody turned their heads. You know, there was this moment of, like, she just has stunning presence, mm. you know. And, and it, of course, the film, Mike, I mean, we, we always look for this kind of people. You know, we just were interested in somebody who would be good in camera right away, right? Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. Another thing was her story was very interesting because it was a lot of, it was a very personal story of how she grew up in Zimbabwe. But at the same time, every detail had a lot of politics in it, which resonated with what was happening in the country and actually what is happening today as a result of of that time. So Nora and I started writing a script. At the time we saw a film with Marina Abramovich called Balkan Baroque by Pierre Kulibov. It's a, this idea of telling artists' story using artists' art form. How did that affect you in terms of the way that you made the film? Mm -hmm. um, politically, what were your choices? Were you motivated by that sort of categorization? And then how were you motivated and, and, and your connection with Nora Mm -hmm. How were you motivated within her specific stories and her personal stories and how are they then affected by the end outcome which is the dance film as opposed to a dance video or more abstract way of telling the stories? First of all, I mean, David Hinton and, and I think I met you, I mean, we're filmmakers. We make cinema. So for David, there was no even a, a single like shade of a doubt that's going to be for cinema because oh, okay. that's what he makes. Okay. It, in a way, like, we wanted, I mean, we wanted to reach as many people as possible. So from the very beginning, it was clear we're going to make um, a dance film, which would be 
um, accessible, perhaps in terms of the storytelling, mm -hmm. inventive in, uh, in terms of the form. We really tried to be very specific and go from Nora's story. We didn't know much. I mean, of course, we know history. Of, we knew history of Zimbabwe. Or like, I mean, I actually knew it because of the communist world mm -hmm. more so. You know, and David, of course, knew because of the England whole connection to all this. So, so in many ways, uh, we were kind of f quite familiar with what happened. Um, but we were trying to look for kind of, you know, details uh, from her story. And very soon, when basically the way we worked, I interviewed her, uh, like, for a long time. And from those stories, I would pick little details or scenes, and then I will bring them back to her. And I'd say, okay, well, how about if we take this scene? What would that mean to you? And so we basically came to 12 episodes. You don't say what that means. You just present the facts. Yeah. And allow audience to actually try to make connections. And understand, or like, you know, she was, she was purveyor of all things British. You know, white sugar, white flour, you know, white soap. What, I mean, she was teaching locals how to brush the teeth. I mean... All this, thing, it's subtle. It becomes very kind of subtle, but it talks about big history, you know. So in many ways, that was the approach. Just to be very specific, yeah. but not kind of, don't make those generalized statements in any way, but just work out the details as visually interesting as possible. Yeah. So the goal was, and was a decision to avoid cliches. Uh -huh. And finally, um, we were interested in what does African cool mean? What does it mean? We looked at a lot of photographs of different uh, photographers, uh, African photographers, but also Western photographers who photographed um, Africa in different periods of time, you know, uh, in colonial period, post-colonial. And the last thing to say is that, which um, we had a big argument about in, uh, with Nora, uh, David and I really like this filmmaker named Sergei Parajanov. His approach to cinema was to create those kind of visual tableaus. So each shot is basically a choreographed scene. He uses very well foreground, background, and middle ground. The action is, it's all with movement, but he doesn't work with dance, he works with actors. But there's a, some kind of mystic about it, or myth, in a way, because the images are so gorgeous, the, the everything is so well composed and it becomes this kind of a, a work of art in itself, almost like in each, each frame. And this kind of approach, one of this, like formally, cinematically, we wanted to translate that approach to, uh, uh, to Nora's story. So it's a very similar kind of framework. We're telling a story of Nora that happened in the past. It's a memory film, it, but then finally it was economical. We didn't move the camera. For instance, we could set up a shot and work it out and choreograph it and almost treat a frame as a theatrical space, you know, or create this kind of called movement images. But that gave a film a certain signature, you know, certain a very formal, very clear kind of approach. And that what brought this production values that you're talking about. I mean, we're just writing almost like a poetic uh, rendition of reality that that would happen through somebody's personal experience. We were not pretending we're making an African film. This is not an African film. This is a collaboration of you know group of artists from all these different places, and that's rendered absolutely rendered through that lens. And uh, you know, mm. so so and and of course it will be always perceived differently depending on the, where this film is shown. We have never seen anything like that from Africa. That's, the, that's what we're getting here. Instead of gritty, grainy, and all that stuff you're talking about, which is always there, and everybody knows that. Yes, it's, it's a fantasy, sure. You know, it's a romantic thing, of course. But aren't Africans allowed to do that? Or people who are interested in that. Absolutely. Are they allowed? You know, why not? I mean, why does it always have to be the <laughs> same greedy and, 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 and the other has a right to exist? I mean, that, it's a question of formal language, too, you know, and the subtlety. I mean, we're trying to be subtle.